During the Second World War, the Germans could not do much to improve the heavy industries of their allies. In Europe, besides the Italians, only the Hungarians managed to put resources and time into actual tank production, albeit in a limited scope. They did so under the leadership of Admiral Miklos Horthy, who aligned Hungary with Nazi Germany, partially motivated by Hungary's territorial ambitions. Despite only having a limited pool of armored vehicles, the Hungarians managed to achieve success against neighboring nations such as Czechoslovakia and Yugoslavia. Things turned out differently after the invasion of the Soviet Union in 1941. As the invasion progressed, the Hungarian armored units suffered extremely heavy losses and by the end of the year, nearly all of their AFVs were lost. As the Germans desperately needed more men for the upcoming 1942 offensive, they supplied the Hungarians with over 100 tanks. These included 22 Panzer IV Fs, and in 1942, they were by far the best tanks that the Hungarian army operated. Following the end of the First World War, Hungary was stripped of most of its border territories in favor of Entente allies and newly formed nations. It was left a shattered country that began a slow path of rebuilding its economy and army. The Honved was particularly keen to one day being able to take back some of those lost territories. However, for that, it would need to rebuild and rearm its military forces, including the creation of their first armored formation. Hungary was actually prohibited by the Treaty of Trianon, signed on the 4th of June 1920, from developing and using tanks and other armored vehicles. Nevertheless, during the mid-1930s, they purchased over 100 Italian CV-33 fast tanks known in Hungarian service as the 35M Ansaldo. In addition, the Hungarians obtained a license from Sweden for the production of the L-60 light tank, which would be known in Hungary as the Toldi. The Hungarian armored formations would see limited action in minor skirmishes with Czechoslovakia in 1938 and during the occupation of Yugoslavia in April of 1941. The first proper combat test for the Hungarian armored formations occurred during the Axis invasion of the Soviet Union in 1941. While the Hungarians were not eager to wage war with the Soviets, they nevertheless joined the Axis forces during Operation Barbarossa. The Hungarians officially declared war on the USSR on the 27th of June after Soviet air raids into Hungary occurred the previous day. For the invasion of the Soviet Union, the Hungarians could muster 81 Toldis and 60 35M Ansaldos. By the end of 1941, nearly all of these were lost in either combat or due to mechanical breakdowns. To rebuild its shattered force, the Hungarian High Command reorganized its armored formations into the 1st and 2nd Armored Divisions. Given the rage in war in Europe, purchasing new equipment was impossible. To make matters even worse, the Hungarian High Command was hard-pressed by the Germans to send additional forces to the Eastern Front. Thus, the 2nd Army was chosen to support the German operation with the aim of capturing the crucial city of Stalingrad in the oil-rich Caucasus. This army consisted of nine light divisions supported by the 1st Armored Division. The major problem for the Hungarians was finding enough tanks to outfit this division. The formation of the Hungarian 1st Armored Division was done on a rather ad hoc basis, with any available mobile units allocated to the formation of this division. The unit was also in short supply of other equipment and weapons, not to mention tanks. For this reason, in December of 1941, Germany sent a delegation to Hungary to discuss the situation regarding the acquisition of tanks and crew training. It was agreed that the Germans would sell tanks to Hungary and they would provide the necessary crew training. At the start of 1942, the Hungarians dispatched a group of 40 officers and 144 enlisted men to Germany. The nine-week training course officially began on the 10th of January 1942 at the Wunsdorf Military School. There, the Germans provided Panzer 38T, Panzer IV, and even a few older Panzer I tanks. All these were used for training and familiarization with the new equipment. In addition, in Hungary, another training center was organized at Edstergom Tabor. Despite German promises of modern equipment, the Hungarians were instead supplied with over 100 Panzer 38Ts, also known in Hungarian service as the T-38, and 22 better-armed Panzer IV Type Fs. In Hungarian service, these were classified as heavy tanks. 
The promised vehicles finally began to arrive during February and March of 1942. These were used to equip the 30th Tank Regiment, which was officially formed on the 8th of April 1942. While the Germans delivered these tanks, they were less generous in regards to spare parts delivery, which would come to haunt the unit later when it saw service on the Eastern Front. Despite the influx of new equipment, it was only possible to form one tank regiment, which was divided into two battalions. In theory, this regiment was to have a third battalion, but there were never enough tanks, so it was never formed. The regiment's command unit was supplied with three T-38s, two Toldies, and at least six command vehicles based on the Panzer I. The battalions were divided into one heavy and two medium companies. The heavy company consisted of 11 Panzer IVs, three T-38s, and one Toldy. Each of the two medium companies was equipped with 20 T-38 tanks. Additional T-38 tanks were allocated to the battalion command staff and reserve platoon. In total, each battalion had in its inventory 52 T-38s, 11 Panzer IVs, and three Toldy tanks. Additional elements equipped with Hungarian vehicles were also attached to this division. This included the 1st Armored Reconnaissance Battalion with 14 Chaba armored cars and 17 Toldy tanks. The Toldy tanks were given auxiliary roles such as medical evacuation, command, or liaison. In addition, there was the 51st Tank Under Battalion, which was equipped with 18 to 19 Nimrud anti-tank anti-aircraft vehicles. In Hungarian service, the Panzer IV received three-digit identification numbers, which were painted on the turret's rear side and occasionally on the turret's left and right sides. The 1st Tank Battalion had numbers from 0 to 3. 0 was used for the command company, while 1 to 3 were allocated to each of the three companies. The second digit also went from 0 to 3, but instead of companies, it indicated the platoon. The last digit represented each vehicle's individual number. The second battalion used the same system, but with the first number ranging from 4 to 7. On the rear side of the superstructure, the Hungarians added registration plates. For the Panzer IV, these consisted of the number 1 next to a capital H, followed by the Hungarian flag. Above them, a three-digit number starting from 800 was added. Elements of the Hungarian Second Army began to reach the Eastern Front in May of 1942. Part of this army also participated in the German Operation Blau and was tasked with defending over 200-kilometer-wide front lines on the River Don in July of 1942. Given the rather poor railway infrastructure in this part of the Soviet Union, the relocation of the 1st Armored Division took months, as transportation of tanks directly to the front line was not possible. The Hungarians were forced to unload their tanks and drive over 300 few hungry kilometers to finally reach their destination at the uri storozhevoy area west of the River Don in early July. There, the Axis forces were already engaged with the Soviet 24th Tank Corps. The first combat action of the 1st Armored Division against the Soviet bridgeheads was generally successful. It began on the 18th of July with one Panzer IV destroying a T-34 tank. By midday, the Hungarians managed to eliminate the Soviet forces. During this engagement, the Soviets lost 21 tanks, of which 12 fell victim to the Panzer IVs. They destroyed two more light tanks during the Soviet retreat over the River Don. By the end of the day, the Hungarians were reported to have taken out 35 tanks. This number also included a few M3 Stuart light tanks which were captured. During this engagement, one Panzer IV, commanded by Lance Corporal Janos Rozik, was credited with destroying four enemy tanks. However, for the Hungarians, the Soviets made a nighttime counterattack and managed to drive the Hungarians out, re-establishing their bridgehead, and Hungarian attempts to push them back were unsuccessful. The Soviets then established two well-defended positions west of River Don at Uri and Korotoyak, posing a serious threat to the Hungarians. The 1st Armored Division was to play a crucial part in an operation to push them back. To do this, it mustered a force of over 140 tanks, including 20 Panzer IVs, and began the offensive on the 7th of August, 1942. The advance was slowed down by the extensive Soviet defense line, artillery, and air support. Due to these obstacles, it was not possible to use a mass tank attack in one concerted push, but instead the Hungarians used their tanks to support the infantry. 
By 9th August, they managed to clean up many of the Soviet defensive positions but suffered heavy losses in return, namely 38 T-38, two Toldy, and two Panzer IV tanks, including nearly 400 men killed. On the 13th of August, the 1st Armored Division attacked the Soviet positions at Kodotoyak. By this time, the division's strength was reduced to 44 T-38s, four Panzer IVs, and only five Toldy tanks. During the fighting, the Hungarian tanks managed to destroy 10 Soviet tanks, the majority of them being M3 light tanks. One Panzer IV, commanded by Lajos Hegedus, managed to take out four M3 tanks. When his tank ran out of ammunition, Hegedus ordered the driver to drive to the rear for resupplying. Eventually, they hit a Soviet mine and the tank became immobilized. Ironically, one of the destroyed M3 tanks, previously taken out by the same Panzer IV, opened fire. The M3, while heavily damaged, had an operational gun and the Soviets had prepared an ambush. After receiving several hits, Hegedus' Panzer IV eventually exploded. The radio operator and the driver were killed while the rest of the crew survived and escaped to friendly lines. By the 18th, the intensity of the battle slowly died out due to losses sustained by both sides. The Hungarian 1st Armored Division had lost over 1,700 men. In regard to armored strength, it only had 55 T-38 and 15 Panzer tanks combat ready. This division was then pulled back for rest and recuperation. To help rebuild the Hungarian armored forces yet again, the Germans supplied them with four Panzer IV Type G tanks armed with a longer L-43 gun. By the end of August, the Hungarians managed to rebuild their tank pool to 22 Panzer IVs, including long-barreled versions, 85 T-38 and 5 Toldy tanks. The 1st Armored Division was once again at the front line at the start of September. Its task was to support the attack on the Uri Stodorzhevoi bridgehead, which the Soviets had fortified with thousands of mines and dug-in T-34 tanks. The Hungarian tanks attacked the Soviet positions on the 9th of September, and the following day, the Panzer IVs managed to destroy two T-34s and a more heavily protected KV-1 tank. Two of those were destroyed by Corporal Janos Rozik. Following that engagement, his Panzer IV tried to advance alone and was spotted by a Soviet anti-tank crew. They soon fired their 7.62cm gun, hitting the Panzer IV at close range. The round likely hit the Panzer's ammunition storage, completely destroying the tank in the process. By the 11th of September, the Soviet defense was finally breached. On the 12th, the Axis forces proceeded to attack the Soviet line near Stodozhevoy. They succeeded and began to fortify their new line, but the following day, the Soviets made a counterattack spearheaded by T-34 and KV-1 tanks and drove off the defending Germans. The Hungarian armor was sent to try and stop the Soviets. During the following engagement, the Hungarians suffered heavy losses, their tanks being almost useless against the armor of the KV-1. At nightfall, the Hungarian 1st Armored Division was left with four Panzer IVs and 22 T-38s. They managed to destroy eight Soviet tanks and only damaged two KV-1s. The battle lasted until 16 September and ended with a Soviet defeat. That day, the Soviets lost 22 tanks taken out by tank and anti-tank fire, mines, and supporting German Stug 3s. The 1st Armored Division was left with only two Panzer IV Type Fs and 12 T-38s. By October, an uneasy stalemate took hold, which the Hungarians used to reinforce its division with new tank crews. During the same month, an additional six Panzer IV Type G and ten Panzer III tanks were temporarily given to this unit. Due to slow crew training, these vehicles were actually operated by German crews. On the 19th of October, Hungarian Panzer IVs managed to destroy four additional Soviet tanks. At the start of 1943, the Soviets made massive preparations to overwhelm the Axis defenses around Stalingrad, including the Hungarian forces. The 1st Armored Division at that point had eight Panzer IV Type Fs and eight Type Gs, 41 T-38s, nine Panzer III's, two Toldy tanks, and five Martyr II tank destroyers, which were temporarily given to them by the Germans. The attack began in mid-January and inflicted great losses on the defenders. On the 17th of January, 1943, four Panzer IVs and eight Panzer III's attempted to counterattack. The attack was eventually called back, but one Panzer IV had to be scuttled by its own crew and it broke down. Two more Panzer IVs met the same fate when they ran out of fuel. 
By early January, what was left of the division managed to reach Krakow and was withdrawn from the front lines. While the sources disagree on a precise number of Hungarian surviving tanks, it is believed that none of the original 22 Panzer IV Type F survived the 1942 campaign in the East. That concludes our video on the Panzer IV Type F in Hungarian service. What do you think? Could the Hungarians have been able to stand up to the Soviets if they had more quality tanks? Were there any other options available to the Hungarians? Share your opinions in the comments section below. If you haven't done so already, we invite you to subscribe to stay updated on future content. If you'd like to contribute further and buy us some fuel to keep us going, consider supporting us on Patreon or PayPal. Your contributions help us create more engaging videos. Until next time, stay focused and stay tuned.